This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. There are some visions that are taking place at night when the person is asleep. Those called dreams. The visions that are taking place in the thoughts of a person. Those are his hopes. And there are visions that a person receives from heaven. The Creator Himself is revealing, opening the eyes of the person to know the Creator's will. Now, it's written that the Creator, He gives wisdom to the wise. So, what gonna do the fool if he wants to learn? How can he learn? If the Creator will supply the wisdom only to the wise ones, so what us, what we gonna do? On that, it's been said that the wise person is the one that is ready to learn from everyone. From every person he is ready to learn. He is desiring the wisdom and for that he is being called wise. The wisdom is to seek for the wisdom. Even King Solomon, Amelech Shlomo, he said on the wisdom, Amarti Echkema, when I said that I want to get wiser, that I'm going to learn more, I realized that it's so far away from me. The purpose of knowing is to know that you don't know. In the moment that a person starts thinking to himself, okay, I know something, that's where it starts melting and disappearing between his fingers. All the wisdom that he bought, all of his understandings just melts and disappear between his fingers and he loses connection. Many huge righteous people lost their level, failed and fell to foreign places, to very dark spots, to very foreign places, very, very, very far from holiness. And only because that they reached a certain level that they thought to themselves, welcome, they thought to themselves that they reached that level, that they bought that stage, they thought that they belonged to that place and that they own that spiritual treasure that they've been exposed to. And then in that moment the Creator just turned His face from them. And they stayed in that darkness, thinking to themselves that they're still in the light. Failing other people to follow them, and making other people think that what they claim is always the true, the truth. But actually leading people to the valley of death, to the lowest places of them all. Misleading thousands and thousands of people after them, to rock bottom, to the lowest places of hell, claiming and thinking and convincing themselves that they are righteous and that they are pure, but actually just foolish people with no connection to humility, to purity, to the truth. And from the other side can be a person that will dress with torn clothes, all filthy, full of scars and wounded, not clean, doesn't know the Jewish rules at all and he will hold in such amazing spiritual levels and only because the sincerity of his heart, only because that when he's opening his mouth he's talking from a humble place 
that he's praising the Creator, that he's full with gratitude, that he understands that the mission of his life is to learn and to humble himself and to continue. Do we know how was the face of Sarah Imenu, our mother Sarah, will look like? Do we know if she had blue eyes or green eyes, if she was tall, if she was short, if she was blonde, brunette? Do we know anything about her look? Do we know something about Abraham, Abraham, our father? Do we know something about him, if he was tall, if he was short, if he was fat, thin, thick, strong, muscular, if he was... Do we know if he was able to run, if he was, if he was walking slow, if he was stable, maybe he was a very weak person? We don't know. Why we don't know? Because it's not important for us to know. Because the spiritual level of a person will never be depend in his IQ and in his height and in his look and in the color of his eyes and not even his race, not even his nation, his religion. It not depends in that at all. Bil'am that he was a prophet of the nations, he was a non-Jew and it's true that he failed. It's true that in the end he went to a very low and dark place. But he had the potential to become even greater than Moses, than Moshe Rabbeinu. The Creator opened for him that opportunity to prophesy, to be a prophet. He was seeing the Creator and talking to him in an equal level to the level of Moses, of Moshe Rabbeinu. Only because that the Creator, he himself, the one that is above everything, he got that desire to bring down the wisdom to everyone. He wants everyone to know Him. So when you're opening yourself to Him, you become a vessel. And when you become a vessel, the wisdom can come through you and wash you and purify you and go to the rest of your beloved ones, to your friends, to your family, to your nation, to your, to your town, to whoever that you will, 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 will reach out to. It's in the power of every creation to become a channel, to bring down bounty to this world. But for that, you need to recognize your own power. And what is your power? Your power is the power of your faith. Your power is the power of understanding that the Creator, He is the one that provides life that gives wisdom, like we're saying in the blessings of the prayer that we're praying every day, You are that one that gives wisdom to people. And we're saying in that blessing every day, You are the one that gives wisdom to the person. So please give us the wisdom from you. And I'm going to ask you that question that I asked many times before. Why should we say to Hashem, if you are the one that gives wisdom, so give us the wisdom from you. Why do we need to say that it's from Him again in the end? If we said you are the one that can give wisdom, so why we should say give it to us from you? When you said give it to us, we already declared that we know that it belongs to Him. So why should we say in the end, meitcha, from you? Why? It's not needed. But it's very, very important and needed. What is needed? It's needed for us to know that we're receiving that wisdom from Him. <laughs> that we're going to remember that we're receiving the wisdom from You. Not only that we're asking to receive the wisdom, we're asking also to receive that memory that the wisdom that we received been given to us as a free gift by you, from you. That's the highest wisdom. That is the vessel to contain the bounty of wisdom. Without that, if you think that you're so wise, you're going to lose your wisdom. You're going to fail in the most hilarious failures, failures in the world. You're going to find yourself embarrassing yourself and uprooting yourself from your own eternal life. 
You're going to destroy your own path. You're going to create your own enemies. You, with your arrogance, with your selfish thoughts of certain existence and being, and being important, going to corrupt and ruin your own path in your life against your own will. And Hashem going to do those things to that person that thinks that he is something, that he is someone, that he achieved a certain level. And that mistake can happen and take place in lives of the highest people of them all, of the biggest righteous ones. The Talmud is describing for us even a Kohen Gadol, a high priest that failed after 90 years of serving in the temple in Beit HaMikdash. 90 years of his life he was the high priest. And then he failed. Why he failed? They're calling that failure that he became Tzeduki. What does it mean Tzeduki? That he was justifying himself all of the time. He was Instead of working all of his life to become tzaddik, to be righteous, he was justifying himself all of the time. Instead of looking for his own lackings, for the things that he can fix, he was trying all day long to justify himself, to pretend to be righteous, that everyone will see that he's righteous, that everyone will respect him on his righteousness, on his fake purity, not on his real spiritual level. On Moshe Rabbeinu, on Moses, it's written that he was shafel vesavlan, that he was humble and patience. And it's written that it's, we, we can't understand what it means when we're saying that he was shafel vesavlan, that he was humble and that also he was patient. Those are two different concepts. What are we talking about? What does it mean? So one of the righteous people explained that he was humble and he had the ability to accept his lackings. He was patient about himself. He was able to hold on even though that he saw how humble he is, how far he is, how many lacking he's carrying with him. He was able to continue with life even though that for him, from his point of view, he was failing on a daily basis. Every day of his life when he was checking himself from head to toe, he saw himself as the worst one of them all. Not because he was blaming himself, chasing himself. Just because that he saw that all of the things that he received until now were only a free gift that had been handed to him by the Creator. And he realized in his humble mind that if the Creator will decide to fail him and to destroy him, he can do it in a second. So all of the success that he harvested in his life was not making him proud of himself, was not making him arrogant. In every situation that he enjoyed success and he saw that he achieved things, he remembered to thank Hashem. He reminded himself all of the time that all of his success is because that the Creator is mercy and kind and nice and loving. And he went with that. He went with that. You know where to? He went with that to Ralph's, to Walmart, to Ross, to Macy's. He went to live his life with his humility. He went to help his wife buy shoes. He went with his children to find new toys. He went to replace some certain products that he needed to replace. He was looking for the receipts. He was not holding himself as a righteous man. He was humbling himself. He was taking himself again to reality. I'm not better than him. I'm not better than hell. So why that I will be unique or special or different? I need just to keep my eyes up and to keep on hoping to Hashem. I don't need to act like a rabbi. I don't need to pretend to be righteous. Even though that I am Moshe Rabbeinu, I couldn't care less. My wife, she needs me. Okay, my wife, what do you need? My children, they need me. Okay, Gershom, what do you need from me? I'm coming to help you. Okay, um, Rechavia, what do you need from me? Okay, he's coming. The children of Moses. He's answering. He's answering the phone. He's answering his friends. He's going. He's checking what's going on with you. He's knocking on doors. He's caring about his friends. He's checking up with them. 
His eyes are open to see what is the real will of the Creator from Him. And He is not falling into that dream, false dream of imagination of holding in a certain level. I am the King of Israel. I am the Prince of Israel. I am the leader of Israel. I am the one that made all those wonders. He doesn't think like that. He doesn't waste his time with those foreign thoughts of idolizing himself and pleasuring himself with that fake imagination of having a certain power. All the power in the world belong to the king of power, to the king of all kings, that he holds all the power of this world in his hand. And the other hand is a hand of grace, of kindness, that he used his power to influence good and love and understanding between people. And he's using all of his life experience to provide advice and wisdom to the one that needs it. If you can ask a person what's going on with you, how are you doing 90% of the people when they will become honest with you in a conversation, they're going to start opening to you troubles and problems and issues that the truth is that all of those issues that they're going to describe as the sorrow of their life, the trauma of their life, are common things that most of us are dealing with. Even though that it can be very painful for them, it's also very painful for us. But only because that we don't know how to deal with it. Not because it's really so horrible. Yes, it's hard. For us it's very painful. But you went through exactly the same thing that she did. And she did went through the same thing that the other one did. And he went through the same and maybe he felt even worse in his situation and you don't know but the truth is that all of our sorrow is coming because of lack of understanding that we don't understand that everything that happened to us in life is first of all supervised by the Creator into our life for our good for our success that we will achieve something because of that experience and immediately we want to reject that claim. Oh no, no, that's too much. Thank you, very generous. I don't want that gift. Then it's written. On suffering it's written that we don't want them and we don't want the reward of them. We don't want to be rewarded on sorrow, on suffering. No, thank you. Don't be too generous, okay? Keep it. I don't need it. It's, I'm great. I'm doing fine without it. But the truth is that when we are looking back at our lives and we're checking with eyes of truth what really brought us to the levels that we are happy about in our life today, our humility, our sensitivity, the fact that we're caring about other people, our good attributes, if we're going to check with eyes of truth what really brought us to those levels that we're happy with, we will see that it was not only the great experiences that we had in our lives. Mostly it's those hard hours that were humbling us. Mostly it was the hard experiences that we experienced in our life that opened our eyes to understand that to be selfish won't bring us nowhere, that we need to deal with life, that we need to grow and to be more mature and more understanding and to understand that there are other people also as well with us in the world, shipping in the same boat, having the same issues. The troubles that we experienced in our lives opened our eyes and connected us to the truth. So like we said before, from one side, the sorrow and the pain that you experience in life. We don't want it. We don't. But when we're looking back, we're seeing that we really received it for a reason. Now what is the reason? Great, it humbled me. But now what I'm going to do with that humility? Going to be humble for the rest of my life? Just going to be low and shallow? That's not the success. The success is only when you use your wisdom that you achieved it from your life experience and you go and you make other people rich.
When you see a person that doesn't know what to do with his shopping, that doesn't know how to pay his bills, that doesn't know how to find a job, that doesn't know how to make peace with his soulmate, that doesn't know how to raise his children, you can go and assist that person. You can give him a hand and then you become to be an angel in that person's life, even if you're not an angel at all. Even if you're just a common person, just a regular person that is also dealing with life. But in that person's life, you became an angel. You became the good news of his life. You came to be the solution of his main life problem. And where you bought that wisdom from? Except from those hard hours, those dark places that you reached, that for you those were rock bottom. They were the lowest places you ever reach in life. But the truth is that diamonds and pearls and gold you can find only in the mines, only underground, only in the depths of the sea, only over there the holy sparks are hidden, well protected. And when you fail, when you went down, when you failed, you have that mission to open your eyes in the depths, in that darkness, and to see how to bring up sparks from those failures, from those downs, from those hard hours. What is hidden here? What that is hidden is the message of the Creator to you. To you. People experienced horrible pain, horrible sorrow of loss and despair, terrifying moments in their lives. Okay, you went through that. Now hold your breath and breathe deeper and think. How can you use your life experience to benefit others, to help your beloved ones, to become that shoulder that you will lack of? How are you going to be that friend that you were looking for when you were falling? How you will be that support? How you will be that mentor for life for the people that needs you? And that going to heal you. That going to build you. And not only going to build you, also going to build thousands of other people around you. Now, why is this rabbi so crazy? that he's going around the world and washing your brains. I'm going to tell you a small joke about it. My father, when I started doing tshuva and I became religious, so he told me they brainwash you. So I looked at him and I told him, I hope that someone's going to wash this brain already. I really need that brainwash. It's like so filthy from so many years. Please wash my brain. Please, some mikveh, some refreshing water. Domestic thoughts, horrific thoughts, paranoid thoughts, horrible thoughts, negative thoughts of despair, of sadness. We're all carrying that horrible cargo on our backs, in the back of our mind. We need to see what is the mission, what does Hashem want from us. Why do I need to go through so much sorrow? Why do I need to experience so much pain of despair, of separations, of, of disappointments, sadnesses with no end, black bitterness? Why should I taste that darkness with my mouth until I feel that taste of, of emptiness in my life? Why should we go through all of that hell? Only for that cause. That this crazy rabbi realized that he is not the center of the universe. He's just a person that been created to share. That the Creator gave him a certain face, a certain voice, a certain talent, a certain ability to access, to reach out to people. So he must use that ability, that talent, that gift that he received from heaven. Not because he's gifted, just because it's his mission. There is another person that is able to play basketball. And I'm going to tell you that if I would be him, I would save so many more lives than the lives that I saved until today. Because through a talent to play basketball, Basketball, you can save so many lives more than what that a silly rabbi can save. Oh, I'm so limited because I'm a rabbi, because I'm teaching, because I look like I look. It's so hard for me to communicate. It's so hard for other people to look at me and to accept from me and to hear me because of my accent, because of... With all of my lackings, I'm working so hard to reach out to people. 
But if you have certain talents, you have money, you have power, you have wisdom, you have beauty, you have your skills, you have your, 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 your habits, you have your communities, you have certain things, you must use those things and to access into the hearts of the ones that are surrounding you. You don't need to be a righteous man to save lives of people. You just need to be dedicated for that purpose and to go on. Think to yourself that now a certain supermodel, a, a, a famous superstar, really going to wake up to decide that he's going to make a change in the world and he really going to have that understanding like we're talking right now. How much power he has. How much power he got in his hands to use his millions and his connections in the, in the national TV to reach out to people. Immediately he will, will, will be in Oprah and whatever and he's going to conquer the world. But why he doesn't do that? Because he's not brave enough to express his thoughts. We must be strong and brave to express our thoughts, our holy desires, our will, and to go with it and to wash the world with the water of faith. To teach people to believe in themselves, to accept themselves, to be who that you are with peace, with comfort, to be calm, to accept who that you are, not to try to change all of the time and to make changes in the world, just be who that you are, who that Hashem made you to be. Like we said before, do you know what the height of King David was? Do you know how, what was the IQ of King Solomon, the Melech Shlomo? Do you know something about their wives, how they look like? No, you don't know. Why? It's not important. What is important? That they were dedicated for the truth. That they went out and they were screaming their heart out in public. That they were not sparing their thoughts from their friends, from their beloved ones. That they were honest and sincere about their truth. About the way that they were understanding the truth. And they were nice and generous and kind. And they went and helped another person and another orphan and another widow. And another wealthy person that didn't know what to do with his life. And they went and knocked on doors and they offered their services and tried to provide an advice and a hug and a smile. And their charm went out to the world and made a change. Only because the day, their heart went out. Because they expressed their own thoughts. Not because they were tall or rich or famous or had amazing connections. They built those connections only because of their honesty. They wrote those books, they composed those books, those righteous, huge, amazing books because of their sorrow, because they dealt with the pain of their emotions, of the scars of their spirit, because they went all the way with the truth and they were not avoiding taking responsibility on their own lives. They were not trying to run away from troubles. They deal with their fears and with their sadnesses. They were confronting their own fears. They were staring into their fear in the eyes and they were able to admit in their lackings. They were people of truth. They were able to do tshuva, to come back to Hashem, to apologize on their mistakes, to say, I love you, to say, I'm sorry, if your father now going to come to you and going to tell you, I'm sorry, how great that moment will be for you in your life. So be that parent to your child. And that it will be easy for you to say, I'm sorry. Is it too late now to say sorry? Mm -hmm. It's not. Even Justin Bieber is saying sorry. You can learn from him, you see. You can learn from every person on YouTube. It's easy. So many outlets, so many channels of pure wisdom are coming down to this world to wake us up. The Creator is not embarrassed to use all the outlets in the world, all the tools that He created to announce that the wide world will know that only people with dignity, only honorable people can succeed. All of those people that are scamming, we see them in the front pages of the news and in all the, all the paper, newspapers. 
all around, all of the secrets are floating above the water. There is no place for secrets anymore. All the lie is rising itself and you can expose everyone. And people become so sensitive today. You cannot hide anything from your wife and a wife cannot hide anything from her husband. There are cameras all over the world. Everyone that is driving somewhere, all the cameras from all of the stores, all the security cameras, everything is recorded and everything is videoed. Everything is about to explode because the Creator, He desires the truth. So He's showing it to us. My eyes are open. I see everything you cannot hide anymore. So we must decide for ourselves to stop hiding, to be people of truth, to express our hearts, to share with our thoughts and our emotions, to be strong, to admit, and even to bring the lowest truth of your being, to say, I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I'm lying all of the time. I'm confused. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I don't have an advice. If you will share those thoughts to someone that loves you, he will give you an advice. He will help you. He won't judge you. He will give you a shoulder and a hand and he will show you the way because that he sensed sincerity. And honesty that came out of your heart, He's going to love you for that. He won't judge you because of that. And it's true. We all suffered from horrible, horrible shames. We opened ourselves to certain people that embarrassed us, that made fun out of us, that disgraced us, that were not respecting us at all. You're right. But the fact that those people were lousy, is not a good enough reason for us to give up on who that we really are. If that person was so low to make fun of us from our qualities, from our sensitivity, from our inner beauty, and from how gentle we are inside, and he chose to make a fun out of us and to disrespect us, to abuse us, to take advantage of us, it's not a good reason enough for us not to be those holy people that we are. It's not a good reason enough. Who are you? You need to look at the mirror and to face the truth. Not to criticize yourself and to judge yourself. Oh, you're that one. I hate you. I hate your nose. I hate your eyes. I hate your look. I hate your height. I can't stand your accent. I don't. You're poo. You're disgusting. You're pathetic. Not all of those foreign thoughts. Look deep. Look deep. Ask yourself, who am I? Look at the mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most holiest soul of them all? You're going to see your face in the mirror. We're gonna, when you're going to look deep into your own eyes, look only into your own eyes. Ask yourself, who are you? You're going to see a holy soul. You're going to see a broken soul. You're going to see a sensitive, fragile, gentle, fantastic, beautiful soul. A soul that doesn't know how to find its own place in this physical world. A soul that doesn't have an advice how to make money. A soul that doesn't have an advice how to build relationships. A soul that doesn't know how to deal with their fears, with their anxieties. Doesn't know how to deal with many, many things. A soul that failed. A soul that lost. A soul that been wounded and scarred in many, many ways. But still a holy soul. A good person lives inside of you. Betoch Ami Anochi Yoshevet, the Creator lives inside of you. The verses are full of that message. Built a temple and I'm going to live inside of you. The Creator gave you a soul. It's a godly soul. It's not who that you are. You are who that He is. You are part of heaven. You have Chelek Eloka Mimal, part of heaven from above. A few days ago I gave a very inspiring speech. In the end of that speech came to me a certain person and started criticizing me on my class. So the truth is that I didn't have time to hear his opinion. 
And the deeper truth is that I also couldn't care less about his opinion, but I was honorable enough to tell him, listen, there are people in line and I'd rather to help them with their like giving them advice for what they what they want to ask me and if we'll have time in the end I'll hear your opinion he said no no I want to tell you something one small thing please I told him yes please okay what can I do and he said you described us as part of heaven but how can you do that how can you say that we are like God so I told him there is a verse that is saying, Bene Elyon Kulchem, you're all children of God. So a child is not like his father. What's the difference between a child to his father? You are your father's child, so you are him. You're exactly the same. And also that you have many, many righteous people that explained other verses on the same spirit in the same way that are showing to us that we are partners with the Creator, that our souls are part of His decision, that we came from the back of His hand, that we've been carved from under His throne of honor. What that makes us to be partners with Him in His action of creation. And He made us partners with Him and He's calling us in few names. One of the names is His wife. So a wife, she's equal to her husband. One of the names is a child, so a child is like his parent. One of the names is even a brother. One of the names that the Bible is calling us as children of the Creator is brother. That the Creator is calling us his brother. His sister, Achoti, Rayati, my sister, my wife. So many names and also that there is a place that the Creator is comparing us to His mother, so-called His mother. So, in a way, we have a certain quality that even even greater than Him. And we cannot understand it. I'm not saying, oh, it's clear, it's obvious. I understand that it's a hard concept. I understand you need to think about it, to digest it in a way. But still, it's written. Don't ignore those verses. When the Creator described us as His mother in a way, it's because that we, when we're getting married and bringing children to this world, those children carry His soul within. So we're delivering Him down to earth, down to this world, by bringing children to, those, the, to this world. So those children become to be our children, but they're carrying a soul that is also a part of heaven from above. So we are delivering Him to the world, so we become his parents, in a way, in a way. So that person, that poor guy, is standing against me, and I'm trying to explain to him that there are verses that are like, it's, it's clear, that's exactly what the Tashem is telling us. You don't understand your importance. And then it hit me that that poor guy just suffer from low self-esteem. He cannot understand how can it be that he is really so important, that he is really so great. So he rather to exempt himself from that challenge of become a real spiritual being with abilities, with power, with, with responsibility to his action, and to idolize the Creator, and to separate the Creator from us, and to tell him, look, you are Givaldic. You are divine, you're over there somewhere, and we are so low and so poor and so shallow, and we don't have no power. But that's not the truth. The Creator is telling us that every one of us can become a man of God. People can deliver the Creator down to earth. We have the power to bring down wonders and miracles to earth. We can open the sea. We can bring out children from the walls. People that are not able to bring, to conceive, to have children can by their prayers bring children to the world with one tear, with one scream from the bottom of the heart. But it's easier to say, no, me, who am I? I'm going to go to that righteous man. I'm going to follow that Admol, that Rebbe. I'm going to go to that place. I'm going to go, to, I'm going to drink that potion, that drug. You're just exempting yourself from your true potential. 
you can create the world. You're a partner of the Creator, completing the creation. You can cause wonders in the world. You can change the weather. If you will pray for the rain, you can stop things from happening. If you will pray for wealth, you can change people's life. You can save people's life with your prayers. You can make people that are not able by nature to bring children to the world to conceive and to have children. You can lengthen the life of people with your prayers. There are so many stories on people that made wonders. So now we're going to also separate ourselves from them. Oh no, that was the Baal Shem Tov. That was King David. That was Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. That was the Lubavitch Rebbe. But what with all of those women that were just reading Psalms of Tehillim? What with all of those people that were just calling the Creator from the middle of the desert and also made wonders? How are we going to separate ourselves from those poor people that were crying with tearing eyes and had wonders and miracles? How are we going to divide ourselves from them? How are we going to exempt ourselves from our true potential to make wonders in this world? Except of by lying to ourselves that we're not able. But it's not the truth. It's not the truth. The truth is that the Creator of the universe is 100% with you. Now I'm asking you, where is Hashem? All over the world, right? All over the place. Okay, so what's your problem? That you're not in touch with Him. That you're not communicating with Him well enough. That you're not discussing your issues with Him. That you're not opening your mouth after you're opening your heart and sharing and asking for advice. That you're not holding Him and begging for salvations. That you're not screaming to Him. Father in heaven, my wife and I, we crossed half of America looking for shoes. Seven and a half and eight. We can't find shoes for my wife. And I'm going to keep on walking from one store to the other until I'm going to be humble enough to cry to Hashem and to beg for my wife's shoes. And I'm going to knock on another branch of Ross and another branch of all the other women's shoes and I'm not going to find anything because I'm not humbling myself enough to call Hashem, to ask for salvation for my wife that she needs shoes, seven and a half or eight. <laughs> I need to be more humble. And I don't need to be an idol. I don't need to be a prophet. I don't need to be a righteous man. I just need to be who that I am and to pray for my needs. And you need to pray for yours with your power of speech expressing your heart, sharing your emotions, dealing with life situations. You don't need to stand in the corner of the world and to beg for the redemption to come. No, you need to face reality. You need to be grounded. You need to be realistic. You need to be honest and sincere. If you have a friend that doesn't know where he's going to sleep tonight, you need to do whatever it takes to help that friend. If you have the financial ability, you need to take out cash out of your pocket and to take care of your friend. If you don't have that power and you have a house, so if you have the ability to bring him into your house, you need to do that. If you don't have that power as well, at least you can try make some phone calls, you don't have that ability as well, you can pray. You can't pray, you can want. You can care. You can do whatever you can. Whatever that you find that it's in your power to do, you must do. And when you're going to do what the Creator expects you to do, you will see that you will climb from one level to the next and you're going to achieve the heights. Don't look for the elevator. Don't look for the shortcuts. Go straight in your path. Be who that you are. Be sincere. Be honest. And remember that the Creator is by your side. Tell Him your needs. 
share your thoughts, express your emotions, tell him I'm scared, I'm afraid, I don't know how I'm going to deal with this night. I don't want to wake up tomorrow morning. I'm afraid to close my eyes. I don't want to have those nightmares again. I don't want to drink anymore. I don't want to smoke anymore. Please heal my spirit. Heal my hurt emotions. Heal my emotional body. Take care of me. Let me feel your love. Let me feel your warmth. Let me feel that you care about me. Let me find some comfort in your world. What's going on? Honest and sincere prayers will make a change in this world. Not fake rabbis and fake leaders that are desiring your money and your respect. Only holy, righteous, simple, humble, wounded, scarred, baked, toast and fried people like us will re bring the redemption to the world. No kings, no princes, no leaders, no politicians, no wealthy billionaires, none of them. They don't have the merit. They don't have the merit. I'm telling you the truth. I met few billionaires in my life. I sat to meetings with few billionaires in my life. I know that if I would have 1%, 0.7% of their wealth, I would bring redemption. I know that for sure. I know exactly the recipe for the complete redemption. I know how to do that. You're going to testify. Like that you feel now that your life being changed. I have that power to change people's life. Hashem gave me that gift. And you're going to testify. You don't need me to praise myself. You know what you feel in the end of my lectures. I know that if I would have the budget to change the world, I would do that. And those people, they're sitting on billions of dollars and they don't have the merit from heaven to put their hand into their pocket and to give out money to the poor, to us, to the broken souls that are thirsty and homeless, full with pain and sorrow, drowned in despair, lonely, scared, don't know how to hide from their own thoughts. And those people sitting in the heights of the world, in the most fanciest houses, and their money is blocked from them. They can't access their own fortune. They think that they are rich, but they're more poor than us. Because they are not alive. They're cheap and they're suffering with their money and with their fake fears and with their struggles in their minds, don't know what to do. I met billionaires in my life and I saw in their eyes that they don't have the merit from heaven to help, to help to save lives of drowning people, of drowning souls that are begging for a lifeline. People that our organization is going out to save them with no budget. <coughs> paying out from our own pockets, from small contributions and donations of people that enjoyed our content and based on their generosity, we're surviving and continuing in our journey to bring redemption and salvation to the world by the merit of those poor guys like us that started their path from zero and able to donate $18 a month and $36 once in a few months based on the generosity of those honest people who are making that amazing change in the world because of the merit of those honest people that taste the satisfaction of those lectures and decided that the flame of fire that touched their heart is good enough to reach out to other houses, to other people, and they wanted to share. So they're sharing, so they're donating, and they're helping. Not billionaires gonna bring the redemption. Only humble people, dignified people, honest people. Those are the people that will be praised forever. The humble ones, 
the one that went through the humiliations, pain and loss, fears and anxieties. Those are the people that are humble enough to believe in the greatness of the Creator. Those are the ones that no money in the world will mislead them from the path of truth, won't twist their mind, no honor and no respect will blind them from following the light of truth, having gratitude and appreciation to those ones that provide and deliver the light into their lives. I'm blessing you to join us to our Amuna project, to our Amuna family, and together, none of us can do it on his own, alone. No one. I don't know no one here. But friends that came along and joined us during our journey, opened classes here, and helped us to meet so many other souls and to reach out to hundreds and thousands of people. Only those people with their small connections, with their small talents, with their small abilities are making a huge and a great change in the world. One drop is joining the other and together we become sea. A large sea, ocean of wisdom is being spread in the world. Shem will bless you all, that all of your prayers and all of your requests will be answered. Amen. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.